An artist by the name of Watts once painted a portrait of the way he interpreted hope. He painted a picture of a torrential storm taking place. And in the middle of the storm, there was a woman high up on a cliff. She had a harp in her hand. And all the strings on the harp were broken, but one string. And she plucked that one string and a beautiful melody began to be heard. That one string was hope. You and I go through the storms of life. It is the gift of hope that takes us through. Hope is a confident expectation. It's looking forward to the best as opposed to anticipating the worst. People that are hopeless We'll ask the question, what's the worst possible outcome? But people with hope ask, what is the best possible outcome? Hope is a sense of optimism. It is a belief that things can change for the better. Now, the Bible tells us that there are three eternal virtues, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. This Christmas season is a season of hope. First of all, Christmas is about the gift of hope being given to the world. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he brought hope into the world, hope of an abundant life, hope for eternal life, hope for a blessed life. In Luke chapter 2, verse 10 We read that beautiful story where the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds and said, I bring you good news of great joy. A Savior has been born to you this day in the town of David. He is Christ the Lord. What a message of hope that the Savior was born for us. You see, I I need hope in my life. You may say I'm depressed or I'm discouraged or I'm frightened. I don't think things are ever going to get better for me. The gift of hope comes from God himself. There are temporary types of hope we can get, but eternal hope comes only from God himself. In fact, in the Bible, God is called the God of hope. He's the ultimate source. He's the giver of the gift of hope. Romans 15, 13, there's a beautiful prayer that says, may the God of hope fill you with great joy and peace as you trust in him and may you overflow with hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. You can go back to Bethlehem today like those shepherds did. You can behold the mystery again, how God came into the world through his son, Jesus, and you can receive the hope of Christ. The Bible says in Colossians chapter one, verse 27, Christ is in you, the hope of glory. When you receive Jesus Christ as your savior and you have a credible relationship where you walk with God every day and you know that God is with you, that God is going to provide for you, that God is going to take care of you, that God is going to work in every situation of life for your good. When you know those things, when you are a child of the God of hope, in that experience, you will find the hope you need to face life. You won't be dismal. You won't be cynical. You can look forward even in the most challenging situation and know, I'm going to get through this. God's going to work in this situation. God has better things in store for us. You can always be looking forward to the great things that God has for you. The gift of Christ to us is really the gift of hope. As a Christian, I can tell you personally, it is my relationship with the Lord that has been with me almost all of my life since the time I was eight. The one constant factor in my life has been my hopeful outlook on life because Christ is in my heart. I know that I belong to God. And when you know that, it'll change the way you look at life. It'll change the way you look at the future. And it'll change the way you deal with your challenges and problems might come your way. You won't fall into the pit of depression. Just give up completely. You may be going through the worst of times, but in it, you say the God of hope is with me. God will give you hope. He'll give you an optimistic outlook. He'll enable you to ask what's the best thing that can happen here, not the worst thing. Receive the gift of hope today. 
And if you're hopeless right now, maybe you're cynical, maybe you've given up, ask the Lord today by the power of the Holy Spirit to give you the gift of hope. God himself is the ultimate source of real hope. Receive the gift of hope today. But I would also encourage you during this Christmas season to nurture the gift. Christmas is a wonderful time of giving and receiving of gifts. When somebody gives you an expensive gift, you take care of that one. I know you've been at Christmas like I have. You have all these presents and everybody's opening all the presents. And it's amazing how many empty boxes start accumulating and all the wrapping paper. Eventually your whole house is just filled with all kind of Christmas decorations. And you have to be careful, you know, when you're throwing all that out, you might throw away a Christmas gift. And you may have done that before and had to go out there and try to find the gift that got wrapped up in all the trash you were taking out from the Christmas wrappings. I'm sure you've been in a place where you received several gifts. People give you all these different gifts. But maybe that one was really nice, really expensive. Maybe it was the one thing you always wanted. You set that one off to the side. You made sure that that one has special care. The gift of hope that we have in Christ, our eternal salvation, is the most precious gift, the most valuable gift we'll ever receive in our lives. The gift of hope that God has put in your heart, you need to take care of it. You need to guard it. You need to put it somewhere safe. And be asking, how can I take care of the gift of hope? Well, think about all the things in your life that work against that hope. Maybe even people sometimes. Maybe the news or social media. You start listening to the negative. You start listening to the cynical people. You listen from one bad news story to the next. And the next thing you know, the gift of hope starts disappearing. Now you become negative. You become frightened. You become cynical. Be very careful and guard your heart, the Bible says in Proverbs 4 and 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. You see, God put the gift of hope in your heart, but there are a lot of enemies to hope. They'll undermine it, threaten it, make us doubt, make us fearful distract us from the hope that we have in Christ. And during this holiday season, this beautiful Christmas season, guard your heart against all the negative news, the social media slant that takes the negative view of everything, that people want to tell you how bad everything is or bring you every complaint in the world. Guard the gift of hope. Nurture it. It's one of the most valuable gifts God will ever give you. That positive outlook on life gives you a triumphant spirit in every situation of life. So receive the gift this Christmas. And I want to speak to any of you that may not know the Lord Jesus as your Savior. During this Christmas season, ask Christ into your heart. He's the real giver of hope. But not just receive the gift, take care of the gift. Guard that gift. And finally, during this Christmas season, share the gift of hope. Now I know you're getting gifts for your family, your friends. If you're like me, and I know you are, you enjoy actually going out and shopping and buying gifts and selecting the right thing. And you look forward to when they open the gift and they're just awed by what you gave them. And it, it means so much when you and I go, man, I got on the perfect gift and it really blessed them. Well, what about the gift of hope? That's the greatest gift we can give. Not something we purchase at a store as fantastic as those gifts are. The spiritual gifts we give to others are the greatest gifts. Jesus talked about all the gifts he gave us spiritually. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he said, I will give you rest. In John 14, 27, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. In John 14, 16, he told the disciples that he would give them the Holy Spirit. In John 16 and 24, he gives the gift of joy. He said, up to this point, you've not asked me for anything. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be full. You see, the greatest gifts are spiritual gifts. And it's not just true of our relationship to the Lord. It's true of your relationships with your family, with your friends. And one of the greatest gifts you can give this Christmas is hope. Now, if you get on the text message and the social media and you start putting all, all these negative messages or telling everybody how afraid you are or complaining about everything, 
Those are not the type of gifts we want to give, are they? No, we can give the gift of hope. And you're texting people this Christmas season, wish them a Merry Christmas, tell them there's hope in Christ, tell them you're praying for them. If they're down, pick them up. If they feel like things aren't going to change, say, no, God is in charge. If they're upset about politics, remind them that God is sovereign. Throughout this Christmas season, receive the gift of hope. God will give you a revival of hope in your heart. If you're downcast, if you're discouraged today, if you're depressed, if you're frightened, it comes in that secret moment with God saying, Lord, fill me again with the gift of hope and take care of that hope. Don't let everybody with the negative news just erode the hope and your confidence you have in God. Guard your heart against all that negativism and make sure you share the gift of hope. That's the greatest gift you can give this Christmas is to give someone hope in Christ. Join me for prayer. Lord, today we praise you that you are the God of all hope. And I pray today for your people. Bless each person with a new gift of hope today. If they've been frightened or they're negative or they feel like things can't change, I pray you'll break through that mental struggle right now that has put them in a dark place of discouragement. Bring them the light of Christ, the light of hope. Fill them with such joy and peace today as they trust in you in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me today for this time of Christmas reflection. I pray that you and your family enjoy an incredible Christmas together. I want to invite you to worship with us this Christmas Eve at 5 and 7 for the beautiful candle lighting services. I'll be sharing the Word of God here on campus. We're also going to give Christmas stockings to all the kids. It'll also be online. We're looking forward to seeing everyone for worship on Christmas Eve. God bless you. Merry Christmas.